In this quick tip, we'll talk about some creative uses of the Oxford suppressor. While it is a full function de it's also a dynamic compression tool. In part one of this two-part series, we'll try it out on some drums. Here's your basic rhythm section mix, but let's mute out the bass and guitar. To begin with, I'll set it up on a master drum bus, which you can see here. So let's open it up and use it as a compression tool. One of the great things about the suppressor is the ability to use the filters and dynamically suppress only certain frequencies. But let's include all the frequencies. By going to this drag handle, I can include the highs and the lows. We'll open up the width to the full 10 octaves, and you can also grab the individual filter handles to include whatever frequencies you choose. So let's use 20 hertz on the bottom and around 13 or 14K in the top. Pulling down the threshold, we'll compress the frequencies within the bands. In the output monitor section, we have a useful wet-dry control. Now we can control how much effect we want to have or not. In the input monitor section, we have a level trim for plus or minus 12 dBs of gain. We could also push the drums up a little bit. Now that we have the drums compressed in this suppressor, I'm going to use another tool, the inflator, to bring some gain back up. At this point, it's just adjustments between the input gain on the inflator and the threshold on the suppressor. Now we want to lighten up the threshold on the suppressor a little to let more signal through. So we got a good sound happening on the drums. Let's bring in the rest of the rhythm section and check it against the mix. Do some bypassing to see where we're sitting. You can hear that the suppressor adds a little extra excitement to the drums. Now another alternative approach would be to take something like the room microphone and treat that separately. So I'll remove it from the drum bus and set it to the main output. Now I set up a separate aux track with another inflator and suppressor on it, but I'm going to get to it via this bus send. This is kind of a form of parallel compression. I prefer to use a pre-fader send, but you can set it however you like. This allows me to unsolo the room mic and hear the effect alone by pushing up the send. You can hear it's really grabbing that room mic. There's a nice brick wall limiter compression preset I like to start with. Then I'll pull down the threshold and let it do its thing. And since it's clipping over here, I could pull down the level trim. But actually, it sounds good either way. Now we can add back in the room mic. And let's listen without it. Definitely some more excitement. As usual, there's always slight refinements to make in the blend. We can lighten the threshold up a little on the main mix. It's still clipping a little, we could pull the trim back. And we can listen without the effects bus. Bypass the plugins on the submix. You can hear we also bought the room sound out a little bit without a reverb. There we have it, some easy creative uses of the suppressor. Next time we'll open up the advanced screen and take the suppressor even a little further.